safe. He says, in our country, people offer prasad, that is sweets that are ascribed to the idols and then distributed. Is that allowed? Kindly give the dalil, meaning the evidence, as the native Indian sheikhs and various speakers say that it is haram and should not be taken. First of all, is the food that we consume affected by what people do? Meaning, if there is an apple on a tree, does it matter who picks it up? Whether he's a Muslim or a non-Muslim or an idol worshiper or not, if he takes this apple and puts it in front of his idol and he recites his prayers, will there be anything affecting that apple? The answer is no. For food that we consume is divided into two types. Veg and non-veg, as they call it today. For us Muslims, it's considered to be meat of animals that live on land or other than that. What do you mean by other than, than that? Meat that is of animals that live on the ground, on earth, that are halal to us, such as cattle, livestock, so cows, camels, sheep, goats, all of these are halal. Things that we hunt, such as deers, rabbits, also birds that we slaughter, chicken, uh, uh, goose, ducks, whatever. These are meat that are halal for us and they live on earth. There are other creatures that live in sea, in water, and these are halal altogether, regardless of their nature or their names. So sea dog, sea pork or, or, or pig or whatever, sea lion, all is halal. You don't slaughter it. Anything that lives in water, you can eat it once it's dead. Sharks are halal to eat, whales, it's, <coughs> etc. Pardon me. So the sky is the limit. These are the meat. Also, there are anim animals that are prohibited for us to eat, such as animals that have claws and uh, um, are predators, like lions, tigers, uh, um, all these predators that hunt. And also, birds that have the same, such as larks, hawks, eagles, uh, um, etc. So this is meat. Other than that, is vegetables, fruits, or food prepared from such vegetables or, or, or grain or whatever uh, uh, is available. In our religion, what is affected by what you do is the meat. So if I slaughter a dog, I cannot eat that. Even if I say, Bismillah, uh, uh, Allahu Akbar. If I find a cow that fell off the cliff and died, I cannot eat that because it's not slaughtered and the name of Allah was not mentioned. So we have two conditions for slaughtering. And that is, we say Bismillah, the name of Allah is mentioned, and it is slaughtered. The throat, uh, the passage of the air, and the two main veins. This is Islamic. There is another condition which is, which is regarded to the person executing this task, and that is the person who is actually slaughtering. He has to be either a Muslim, a Jew, or a Christian. We cannot eat anything else slaughtered by any person. Now, let's move on to other veg food. 
So again, back to the example of the apple. If a person puts an apple in front of his idols, he does his prayers, he prostrates and bows to it, and then takes the apple. The apple itself is halal. Nothing has changed. Oh, Shaykh, he did his prayers. He worshipped other than Allah. Okay, this is his problem. The apple is still an apple. So, having said that, if a non-Muslim sends us food, and it is veg food, it's vegetables, fruits, sweets, anything that does not have animal ingredients in it. And whether they brought it out of their temples or they had special prayers offered on their feasts or Eids or uh, uh, holy days, and they present it to us, scholars have disputed. Some said haram, as Asif or Saif said. Other scholars said, no, the food is halal itself, but there are a number of preferred conditions. So if accepting it is for the sake of being good to the one who's good to you, this is recommended. If the food is halal, then there's no problem. If you're not participating in their feasts and festivals, not even by congratulating them. So you don't even say happy Diwali or happy Independence Day or happy Christmas. If you don't say this, you don't participate in their gatherings and their festivals, there is nothing wrong in accepting it. Because accepting a gift from a non-Muslim is something permissible. Allah Azza wa did not prevent us from being good to the non-Muslims. On the contrary, Allah Azza wa asks us to be good to those who do not have any form of aggression against the Muslims, do not expel us out of our homes, do not prosecute us in our religion. We have to be kind to them, we have to be nice to them. This is part of our religion. And this is what was done by the companions. Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, and he's the fourth, fourth caliph, and he's the cousin of the Prophet and he's married to the daughter of the Prophet was brought once with sweets that the fire worshippers prepare on their day of feast, which is a Nairuz. And he accepted it, he ate it, and he liked it. And he said, there's no problem in bringing such food every now and then for us, knowing that it was prepared for their fire and on the day of their Eid. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, also was asked about the gifts given to us by disbelievers on their days of feast. She said, as long as it is fruit, there's no problem, meaning that it is not meat. And this is the choice of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on his soul. And it is something that if you apply your common sense with your logic in accordance to the evidences from Imam Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, and from our mother Aisha and other many different uh, uh, evidences, you will find that it is clear, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal.